ladies and gentlemen. Um, our next <laughs> guest has a great deal to answer for in terms of the popularity of Woody Guthrie songs in Canada and folk music in Canada generally. Um, coming out of the UJPO, coming out of the NFLY, I believe, coming out of, no, no never, 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 never cheated them on dues, eh? <laughs> any rate, very much a part of the Toronto scene, Nyvelt, founder of the Travelers, co-author of the Canadian version of uh, This Land is Your Land. Will you please welcome Mr. Jerry Gray? Thank you. Well, I got to first thank John for... Uh, for thinking of this conference and pushing it to fruition, and thanking for ha thank you for having me in it as well. Back east, I've always been trying to do something in the same respect that uh, to respect Woody, but they just don't have the vision to do it back east. Nobody does. Thank you, Rob Bowman, for your kind words today. Uh, I I'm reminded I helped open. Uh, Harbor Front in Toronto many years ago. They asked me to do a French program because they didn't have anybody to do it. So I had 15 songs all prepared. I got there and the crowd was warming up with a French singer who sang my whole act. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Rob, and thanks all you speakers for doing my act. Uh, and thanks, Gary Crystal. About 10, 12 years ago, we had many sessions together as he began writing his book, and I hoped I filled in a lot of the blanks. So here I am to talk about what Woody Guthrie meant to Canada. You've heard a lot about it. Uh, last year, the Travelers had a concert in Toronto. Uh, Woody at 100, and we had a big concert there. It was quite successful. And uh, we got Pete Seeger, who was Woody's friend, if you can get that ready, uh, who... Uh, sent us a, uh, an audio videotape of, the, uh, of an intro to the audience. It was in deep respect that, that Pete has for Canada, Canadians, and the travelers. So here's this intro by Pete Seeger that opened the concert uh, in Toronto last year. This is Pete Seeger in the month of September 2011. Hello to Jerry Gray and all the old travelers who are still alive, and hello to the people who sang songs with them and got the idea that if you want there to be a world here, sing some songs. Have the songs different kind. Some can be funny, some can be serious, some could be so serious that you might even have to uh, explain yourself to people. Why are you singing that song? I met Woody Guthrie in 1940. Showed me how to hitchhike. Showed me how to ride freight trains. I was with him when he wrote the song, Oh, you can't scare me, I'm sticking to the union. And I found a piece of paper among Woody's, uh, many pieces of paper, and at the top of the page it says, God blessed America. God bless America was a big hit at the time, so that was the last line of every verse. God blessed America for me. That's how he wrote the song in 1940, but somewhere in the next eight years, he added a few verses and he got a new last line. This land was made for you and me. Now up in Canada, of course, they added words. It's called the folk process. And uh, I say, if there's a human race here in a hundred years, the folk process may be one of the things that saves us. Many thanks to all of you in Canada for celebrating Woody Guthrie's 100th birthday. You knowing uh, some of you may have written to Pete Seeger, uh, I've written many times to Pete. 
I've written a 12-page letter and I get back with a three-sentence reply. Uh, that's, and to get him to do this, I twisted a lot of arms and legs and uh, we got that. Anyhow, Pete came to Toronto in 1953, said to the travelers who were just beginning, here's the song, This Land is Your Land. I'm speeding it up because I don't have a lot of time. Uh, and he said, keep the song alive because I've been blacklisted, Woody's been blacklisted, and the song is never going to be played until the clouds roll by. So that's how we started. Now remember that Pete was relegated to not singing concerts anymore, not doing anything with the, with the Weavers, but Pete, the FBI and the, and the uh, right-wing organizations kept restricting Pete from singing at any college campus and doing any concerts. They'd phone and say, cancel him. So Pete was relegated to singing to students, to kids. But remember that seven, eight, nine years later, these kids went to college. And in, ninth, in the early 1960s, these were the kids that were ready and already primed to sing Pete's songs and the new songs of the new generation. So Pete uh, was our, our uh, influence and he kept us going. Camp Nyvelt, where I grew up, was on the Credit River, 25 miles from Toronto, a hotbed of music where people like the Travelers started. And in our footsteps came people like Zolyanovsky of the Love and Spoonful, Sharon Hampson of Sharon Lois and Bram, and Bonnie Dobson following in our footsteps, becoming uh, successful folk singers in their own right. Pete Seeger was there, K Guy Carolyn was there, and Leon was there. His voice hasn't changed. God almighty. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, on our first record, this is the record that the Travelers first made, 1957. This is the single that came with it too. This land is your land. <laughs> I think it's the only record uh, that's a bit, that is extant right now. I tried many times to donate these records to uh, the uh, Canadian Music Association. Nobody wanted it, and uh, it's a matter of no respect, I think. They just don't want it. Anyhow, in 1958, 1957, the Travelers made a recording of This Land is Your Land. This is the song sheet from it. I don't know whether you can see it. It's this, it's this moth-eaten copy. Again, this may be the only extant copy Words and music by Woody Guthrie with a Canadian version underneath uh, from the Arctic Circle to the Great Lake Waters. Uh, it was quite the thing, recording. Remember that in 1957, the Canadian uh, recording industry was non-existent. The only person recording uh, in Canada at the time uh, were a couple of jazz musicians, and that's it. There was no folk. But the travelers persisted. We appeared on many, many... Uh, television shows, uh, and I think the television shows were the things that saved us the most. We were given an opportunity in a new fledgling environment. Canadian television started in 1953, and by one year, within one year after starting the group, we were on a summer replacement show. We appeared on many shows with many, many people. Uh, uh, the Hit Parade show, uh, uh, Juliet show, and we have lots of film uh, remaining uh, of people singing, this land is your land. You have to, uh, there, but we were charting our own path in those years. There was no group to, emu to emulate. This was before the Kingston Trio. After the Weavers, we were trying to create something that had never been done in Canada, and that's trying to make uh, people aware of their Canadian music. You told them about uh, the fact that we used to do uh, an hour program, uh, sorry, a two hour program. The first hour, all Canadian songs, and the second hour, uh, songs international. People couldn't realize that, uh, couldn't believe that there were enough songs to fill the first hour of our program. Uh, no folk groups to emulate. Uh, in 1959, Pete Seeger and Harold Leventhal started the Woody Guthrie Foundation to raise funds for the family Guthrie family to live on. And with the Richmond organization, TRO, T they sought to copyright Woody's songs. Woody was a terrible bookkeeper. Woody never copywrote the songs. He couldn't. He just sang them and spit them out. And then finally, the Richmond organization and Pete and Harold tried to repatriate the songs. They asked us to sign over the Canadian rights to our version, which we did within minutes. The letter went back to the Richmond organization and all the Canadian rights 
to the song were given to the Richmond organization except with the one proviso that whenever the sheet music was published or published in any form, it would always say Canadian version by the Travelers. Well, we became a, uh, a Canadian institution <laughs> at the time. Thank you. In 1961, the Travelers helped start the first Canadian Folk Festival in Mariposa and headlined the first three years, always ending with This Land is Your Land. 1962, the Travelers began the tradition of Canada Day concerts on Parliament Hill. The Travelers have appeared there five times, and in 1965, there were 200,000 people in Parliament Hill all singing, This Land is Your Land. Uh, uh, in 1964, the group was one of three performance acts to open the Canadian Centennial Celebrations at a command performance opening the Charlottetown Theatre. The Queen and Prince Philip were enthralled by this land and following the show invited the group to tour Great Britain with an appearance at the Palladium in London. Uh, centennial year. The marvelous, marvelous year. The Travelers did 187 Canadian performance. This is often twice a day. We would come into a town, do a kids show in the afternoon, do an evening show. This included some uh, 26 places in the Northwest Territories. I defy almost any of you to name 26 communities in the Northwest Territories. And we would fly in the concert, this was summertime, when there was 24 hours of daylight, the uh, travelers would do the concert whenever the, uh, whenever the plane arrived, and very often it didn't. Anyhow, here's an interesting sidelight. In 1967, the Canadian courts became involved with the rights to this land, which not many people know about. We'd recorded three albums on ARC Records as souvenirs for the centennial year, including an LP of Canadian labor songs, which included several of Woody's songs. Got to go down and join the union and union made, which the travelers had been singing for 15 years anyhow. A group called the Brothers-in-Law. They were all ex-policemen. That's where they were, the Brothers-in-Law. Recording also on the ARC label wanted to do a parody of our version of this land and recorded the song. The Richmond organization was asked to grant permission and refused. Again, this may be news to the Guthrie family because you were quite young at the time. ARC Records in Toronto sued the Richmond organization in the Federal Court of Canada to allow ARC to release the all reco already recorded parody of the Canadian eyes, This Land is Your Land. In its defense, the Richmond organization stated, the traveler's version of this land is a Canadian patriotic song and said that to create a parody of that song in Canada, the request should be denied on the grounds that it would cause incalculable damage and destroy the meaning and acceptance of the song in the minds of the Canadian public, similar to defaming the Canadian national anthem, which was O Canada at the time. The court unanimously dismissed the request by ARC Records, so when asked if, songs, if Woody's songs affected Canada, the Federal Court of Canada has answered that question. I never did hear the parody and it was destroyed. Uh, next week, I, I've been singing the union made for many years, um, for many, many trade unions. Next week, I sing seven, I and the travelers sing seven performances in five days as a pep rally to warm up every session of the Canadian Auto Workers, which I first sang for as a single performer in 1954. Uh, so I'll be doing that song as a warm-up, and I'll be doing This Land is Your Land as well. There are many songs, many things have happened. Just give me two extra minutes. The Travelers uh, did the first Canadian children's LP eight years before there was a Sharon Lois and Bram or a Raffi, and the concert ended with This Land is Your Land. This Land is Your Land was done every time in the same way that uh, the song On Top of Old Smokey was done. I would lead out the line so everybody knew the line and sang it. The Travelers continued to this very day with different people. In the, in the year 2000, I and the Travelers were awarded a Lifetime Achievement Award by the Toronto Musicians Association, the second awardee behind the posthumous award given to Mo Kaufman. This year's winners were Joe, Jim Cuddy and Anne Murray. That same year, the National Film Board produced a flawed documentary on the early history of the Travelers, and what was it called? 
This land is your land. In 2009, I was given a Lifetime Achievement Award by the Ontario Federation of Labor and the Canadian Law at Labor Congress for spreading the musical culture of labor and human rights throughout Canada. I guess the secret to giving li getting Lifetime Awards seems to be, if you live long enough, they run out of people to give it to. Maybe that's right. But in 2010, there was a move by many labor unions that I've sung for, plus human and civil rights organization, that had to have me nominated for the Joe Hill Award given annually by the Labor Heritage Foundation of the AFL-CIO. Former winners Pete Seeger and Guy Carawan also submitted support for the nomination and I was given the award. The uh, Canadian music industry gave the same answer as the Juno Awards Committee, indifference. I'll end my story now about, a st uh, uh, about the Travelers and Woody with this happening of 2011. I got a call on June 15th last year from the Church of the Latter-day Saints. I assumed that I would be asked to make a donation or to support a Mormon presidential candidate. <laughs> but the, they asked if I would honor them by conducting the Mormon Tabernacle Choir in the final encore of their rare tour on June 28th at the Roy Thompson Hall in Toronto. I agreed and was told that because the tour was ending in Toronto and the choir always closed its concerts with This Land Is Your Land, would I honor them by conducting the 385 voice choir and 85 musicians to close the tour, I was given a recording of the choir doing the American version, and they told me as they gave it to me, well, there's been some changes, just bluff it through. I'd never conducted anything except my children in, a, in any musical event. Uh, the Mormon choir does not allow video of the choir, but my son took a clandestine video with these newfangled cameras. Remember, if he took it from the audience, all he would get would be my tush. So he got on stage beside the organ, which is always there for the Mormon choir, and this is the event that happened. <laughs> Sorry. Look at the Canadian flag on the desk. At the end of the concert, the audience stood up and clapped. The choir stood up and the 85 musicians stood up. I was asked to be a part of this panel and to ask what does this land is your land mean to Canadians? There's the answer. I can't get a bus big enough for them. Oh. <laughs>